Yeah, we live in a time and a, a place where we are pressured to think in very thin and superficial ways. You can look at the analyses of someone like Charles Taylor, the discussion of the imminent frame, the way in which we are trained, even as Christians, going about driving past billboards, watching commercials, interacting uh, with news stories that seem to speak of significant things, and they are all natural, material, and this worldly. I have yet to see the newspaper from the right or the left that is attesting what God is about today. And so learning the art of being spiritually alert and attentive and awakened, having that kind of spiritual imagination is absolutely crucial if we don't want to fall into being a secularized society of Christians. Uh, and so I, I do think eschatology plays a key role, reading a text like Ephesians or Colossians or learning to pray with the Psalms. These are meant to not lead us away from this worldly experiences individually and corporately, issues of justice and of responsibility, but they're to thicken that. And like a, a pair of 3D glasses, they bring out dimensions that we otherwise are not trained or capable to see. And so considering the, the eschatological imagination of Holy Scripture, I think provides a, a thickness that retrains us. Calvin would sometimes speak of how Holy Scripture is meant to serve as a pair of spectacles or lenses through which you can see this world. The point of Scripture is not just that you immerse yourself in Scripture. That's an instrumental goal that you could then take in the whole world as a theater of God's glory. We, we are very good at this point of taking in the whole world as a theater, but I wonder if sometimes we have a thin view of that and we miss God's glory. Uh, we miss the thick presence of God himself. We miss the notion that he is to be seen, he's to be savored, he's to be delighted in. And that our problems, our frustrations, our confessions, uh, they themselves can be too concrete and thin. And so we need to be trained to lament well, to not only struggle with medical issues or political worries, but ultimately with theological concerns. Uh, that our deepest issues are not just problems, they're not just psychological issues, uh, they are sin, and that that's a relational reality with regard to our uh, standing before the triune God. And, and so thickening that imagination, I think, is crucial for people living in a secular age. If we're to be people of hope, if we're to be people of courage, if we're to be people who are genuinely repentant and humble, uh, in a way that demonstrates our awe and our reverence before a God who is other, who is holy, who is transcendent, and who is worthy of all our delight and joy.